Do you want to build the best gravity vehicle ramp? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Hey, what's up guys? If you haven't met me before, my name is Faison and I have competed in Science Olympia for the past seven years and I'm here to teach you everything I know to help you kill it and your next competition. Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like, drop a comment down below and subscribe to the channel because I post new videos just like this every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. All right guys, before I teach you how to build the best gravity vehicle ramp possible, you first have to know what exactly a gravity vehicle is. Now, in very simple terms, a gravity vehicle is a car that's supposed to travel a set amount of distance in the fastest time possible, but the catch is the car can only be powered by gravity. So if you want to learn more about how you can improve your gravity vehicle car, then I'll leave a link in the description below and a card up here that will take you to one of my other videos covering that topic. So number one on our list is to maximize the gravity vehicle ramp height and the gravity vehicle ramp length. Now, the reason you want to do this is because the gravity vehicle or your car is only powered by gravity. And the higher your car starts on this ramp, the faster your car will go. And this is because the higher the center of gravity of your car, the more gravitational potential energy you have. And the more gravitational potential energy you have, the more amount of energy is converted into kinetic energy, and that allows your car to go a lot faster. Now, the reason you want to maximize gravity vehicle ramp length is because the, is because your vehicle starts at a very high point and the longer you have to transition your car from that high point to a low point allows your car to roll down the ramp a lot smoother and this will allow your car to not fumble when it comes off of the ramp and just glide smoothly down the track. And number two on our list is the gravity vehicle ramp width. Now, this is a little bit tricky depending on the size of your gravity vehicle car, but I see, I see a lot of new builders trying to make their ramp the entire maximum dimension for it, or for Science Olympiad, 50 centimeters. Now, although this is okay for making your car and your ramp, it's not ideal. And this is the reason why. So. When you build your gravity vehicle car, you usually build it between 30 to 20 centimeters in width. And when you make your ramp 50 centimeters long, you have so much extra room that's not being used. And this makes your gravity vehicle ramp a lot heavier and a lot harder to carry to your competitions. And you don't really need all of that extra width. So what you can do is cut down on that and it makes it a lot easier to, to take it to your competitions and a lot easier to carry. So number three on our list is the gravity vehicle ramp curve. Now, if you're building a gravity vehicle ramp, you may be thinking that a curve is necessary to make your gravity vehicle faster. And while yes, you may want to have a curb on your ramp, it's not necessarily going to make your car any faster. And here's why. So when you design your ramp, you want your ramp to be as high as possible. And this is to maximize the gravitational potential energy. And that is the sole power that your car has to roll down the track. So in, so in that effect, changing the ramp curve or changing the curve of your ramp is not going to affect the speed of your car at all. And I see a lot of people talking about incorporating a brachistochrome curve, which is the fastest path that, that an object has to roll down a ramp onto their gravity vehicle ramp. And that's just a big waste of time. It's not feasible to draw such a elongated curve across your entire ramp and expect your car to go a lot faster. 
In fact, even having a straight line down your ramp is going to achieve the same amount of end or terminal velocity off the ramp as a ramp with a brachycyclone curve. The only difference is, is that a curve on your ramp is going to allow a smoother transition and make your runs more consistent. So in short, don't worry about the curve of your ramp. Just make something that will allow your car to travel easily down the ramp. All right guys, so the fourth and final thing we are going to talk about that will help you build the best gravity vehicle ramp is to reduce the contact between the gravity vehicle ramp and the gravity vehicle car, and this, specifically at the launching mechanism. Now, if you're a new beginner to gravity vehicle, then you may just be using a simple pencil through the ramp and into your gravity car. Now, if you're doing that, you may be experiencing a lot of inconsistencies with your car rolling down the tramp, down the ramp correctly and down the, down the track pretty straight. And this is because when you're pulling a pencil out of the car compared to some, anything else that's a lot thinner, there's a lot of friction and contact between the car and that pencil. So that is the cause of the, a lot of, of the major inconsistencies for your gravity vehicle car. So if you want to build the best gravity vehicle ramp, find a different mechanism that reduces the contact between the ramp and the car. And I'll be posting a video about this very soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to not miss out when I post that video. If you want to learn more about how you can build the best gravity vehicle ramp, I'll leave a link in the description below that will take you to my website where I created an article about this exact topic. And please leave a like on the video and comment any questions or concerns you have and I'll get to them as fast as possible. Also, subscribe to the channel because I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday and we'll be posting a video very soon about how you can build the best releasing mechanism for your rim. And you can follow me on social media. Links are on the screen right now. And I'll catch you next time. See you later. Stay on